Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our week five of class. Hope all of you are doing well. Welcome to all of you who've joined in online, as well as to those who joined in um, at the e-learning portal. Um, we trust that uh, you're doing well and uh, keeping good. So shall we just start with a word of prayer? Yes. And we'll get straight um, into our lesson for today. Let's just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another week that's gone by. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you continue to speak to us. You reveal more of yourself to us. Father God, even as we uh, look to your word and look to today's lesson, we pray, Lord, that we will personally take time to evaluate and to uh, be insightful about ourselves, as well as to uh, take the help and the counsel of the Holy Spirit to change, change, Lord, for your kingdom, your glory, change, Lord, for the relationships that we have, for the marriages that we have. Thank you that you are our ever-present help in time of need. Lord, we pray for stu all students here who, who are listening in and who logged in. God, thank you that you have bought each one of them. Pray, Lord, for the rest of them who are yet to come in. Lord, that um, you would bring them here, remove every hindrance, every obstacle that comes in the way of a class of us learning together. Thank you for being with us. Holy Spirit, we invite you here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So uh, welcome to week five of our class. We have been going through different uh, lessons. And uh, today we are at uh, chapter five of our, uh, uh, of our lesson in marriage and family. And this, uh, I would say, is, is a very important chapter, uh, not just um, when we look uh, within the um, context of marriage, but also for us as individual people to grow and to, um, uh, to learn about ourselves in, in really determining and understanding how we respond um, uh, to different things in life, okay? So for those of you who, uh, who are following in the notes, uh, if you have the physical book with me, with you, it's on, uh, it's page uh, 55, but if you are uh, following through the um, digital, uh, the, the, the book, the uh, book online, it's uh, page 55. Um, sorry, not 55, it's page, 52. Yeah, we're on page 52. Okay. All right. So let's uh, move straight in. Um, now, in this chapter, uh, um, I, I, th there are certain, you, you would see the chapter's um, heading as attitudes, temperament, and behavior. Now, these are certain use, words that we, we use quite often. It may be in our conversations or maybe while describing people, we use this quite often. But then, you know, I think we need to really break down to see what each of this specifically mean. Now, before we understand that, before we come to that, um, when, when we interact with others, when we interact either with our spouses or we interact with our children or with anyone else, um, what we are actually bringing about is these specific things. Uh, our attitudes, the way we are as people or our temperament, and how we behave. So as we relate to one another, we are actually, more than anything, we are coming face to face or encountering the other person with their understanding, with their perceptions, with their attitudes, with their beliefs, with their temperament, their responses, their behaviors. And all of this could be expressed in very different ways. So you may notice that a person may have, um, uh, you know, may have uh, maybe intellectually very, very uh, strong, or they may have good skills, they may have good communication skills, but um, it also, they also do come uh, with attitudes and temperament and behavior. 
or a person may look uh, great on the outside. You know, they may have very good looks. Uh, they may be very smart in their appearances. They may have a lot of charm in the way that they carry themselves out. But all of this comes along with something that's more deeper, which is a person's attitudes and their personality. We cannot uh, uh, slice away these two. You know, a person comes with this. And so also, even in marriage, when a husband and wife work together, interact, when they are uh, discussing important issues or when, then, when, when stress comes along, when they need to make decisions, when they need to work together, um, this, the attitudes and their personality is what really comes about. And that really plays a vital role in the way a relationship develops. Okay, So um, let's look at what each of these words mean so that we have a better understanding of what it is. Okay, So uh, three words, attitude. Uh, at, when, when we're looking at uh, attitude, we're, we're referring uh, uh, to the way a person thinks or the way the, a person feels about something, their attitude towards something. Like, for example, their attitude towards money. What is their, their uh, what do they think about money? Now, all of this could come from certain experiences or certain um, framework that they have been born with. But nevertheless, it's something that they carry and something that they use to determine different things in their lives. So um, attitude is the way a person thinks or the way a person feels about a certain or a particular thing. That's what we say uh, in attitudes. For example, another example that we look at is, let's say a person is going through a certain hardship. What is the attitude towards uh, hardships that come? Maybe a person is very pessimistic in when, when stress comes, you know, that nothing will work out. This is going to be the end of things. That's the way that they perceive that. Or you may have others who have uh, a more positive, a more optimistic attitude that shows that, uh, you know, we will get through this. Uh, we will be able to overcome whatever challenges we come. So anything that you look at, each of us may have a certain thinking or a certain perception about that. And that's what we call as attitude. So once again, attitudes is the way that one thinks or one feels about anything, about a person, about a thing, about an issue, about a situation, the way that they see it, the way that they think about it, the way that they feel it. OK, uh, moving on to what temperament means. Temperament is the actual nature of a person or the basic um, inclination of a person towards life. What is um, uh, uh, it, it describes how they are. It describes um, uh, what they may what what they may um, uh, uh, what they may in be inclined to do or inclined to think or inclined to feel. Okay. And so that's what we, we, we call as a temperament, or in other words, you could also use what we call it as a personality, the way someone is inclined to something. So you may hear words like, you know, I have, a, uh, I have a calm temperament, or I have a, um, maybe an angry disposition, or I may be uh, an impatient, uh, you know, personality, or I have a, a personality that is very enduring. So you you get to understand how they are inclined inclined to think or to perceive or to behave in certain situations. So temperament is the actual nature of a person, um, uh, uh, and that that really makes them. Um, that's what helps them to do certain things, or it's, or in other words, it's the inclination that a person has towards life and different kind of experiences. Okay, and behavior, the last one. This is quite uh, simple. It's what we do. It is how we react, how we respond. So the behavior is more the expression of the attitudes and the temperament we may have. So if I have a positive attitude towards, let's say, a person, my behavior towards that person will match that attitude. If I have a suspicious uh, attitude towards a certain thing or a certain, uh, let's say, uh, an organization or a certain work, I may behave very, very cautiously towards that. Um, towards that experience okay so attitudes is the way we think or feel about a certain thing temperament is our basic nature or the inclination 
that uh, we, we may have towards uh, life and towards different experiences and behavior is that uh, is something that we do. It is a more response of what happens in our attitude and our temperament. And I hope this is clear because it's, this is this is important for us to understand before we move in. So I hope this is uh, clear to everyone, the different um, meanings of an attitude, temperament, and behavior. Is that clear? This may be a thumbs up that'll help. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anthony. All right, so I suppose that's the rest of the group also feels the same. Yes, okay, I get a second. Uh, all right, so um now now when uh, what we need to understand when two people come uh, in, in, to mar in, into marriage we are dealing with these emotional traits of a person which is expressed through their action or through their communication so even as you're meeting someone you are actually dealing with these three things their attitude their temperament and their uh, their uh, uh, behavior so when when two people with different attitudes or temperament um, come together to face a certain situation, we would see that it can it can differ from the way we think or we act or we communicate. It can differ because we have a certain framework through which we see life. And when we come into marriage, we are interacting with someone else who may have a very different framework from us. Okay. Now, this often in, in when you're looking at marriage, the, this can probably bring up two concerns. Okay. So the one is a personal challenge, which is um, I I need now personally in my life, I need to make sure that the way that I am thinking about something, the way that I feel about something, the way that I behave, the way that I respond should be healthy and it should uh, add or impact my marriage in a positive way. Okay, so first is um, a check to see whether the way my attitudes, my temperament, my behavior is something that is positive and healthy and that will help to build a positive marriage and family. So that's what we look in the personal uh, uh, front of it. Now, when you're looking at the interpersonal, interpersonal, the meaning of interpersonal means between two people, something that happens between two people. And here, just like how in the personal challenge that the way that I need to be aware of how I think, how I behave, how I act. Similarly, I need to understand the way my spouse thinks or acts or behaves or uh, perceives things in different situations. So I am able to understand them correctly. OK, now I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say there is. Um, uh, there is. Uh, I just want to sh make sure that I, I take take. Uh, uh, let's say Jack and Jill. Okay, I think they're really um, common names. Okay, uh, so let's say Jack and Jill married together. Now Jack comes from a very um, um, affluent family. He's come from a family where there where there has been no dearth of money. When where there uh, there hasn't been. Uh, too much of a stringent rule about money, right? That money uh, is spent without second thoughts. Whereas you have Jill, who comes from a more conservative, more middle class family where, where money has been an issue, money has been a concern, and as a result, uh, you know, have been very frugal in the way that uh, she has used money. Now, when both these people come together, you would see that um, probably let's say Jack is often buying things for the house that isn't even necessary and maybe or uh, let's say uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure this is a common example you know something uh, doesn't work in the home maybe it's a TV or it's a um, you know it's some appliance some equipment that doesn't work at home uh, he may be quick to throw it off and buy a new one whereas Jill um, has been bought up in, in the sense of of being frugal so it, the minute that something's not wrong or something is wrong with an equipment she may take it to the to the repair shop get it repaired and come and spend as least amount as possible right and this often can become like a source of uh, a conflict between two people where one person says you know you're wasting your time and actually taking it to 
you know, we've used it for 10 years and why do you want to use that? You know, just get a new one. Whereas Jill may say, you know, uh, it, it's better to save money for something that we may have. Uh, this is in, this is some still in working condition. You know, we just have to pay a, 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 you know, a couple of hundred rupees and then, you know, things will be, things can be settled. So you see, uh, this is coming from from their own framework, their own attitude about probably money or or getting things. But then it definitely is important for Jack and Jill to first of all understand what their perspective is from and also interpersonally understand it from the other perspective. Why is it that they are speaking the way that they are or thinking that uh, you know something should work the way because if if that's not understood there's often a misunderstanding that happens and uh, it can lead to conflicts so i've given you a very simple example but this can happen in very many different spheres and uh, spectrum of life okay so these uh, th these two th these three things the attitude the um, temperament as well as the behavior the, uh, is is something that uh, as a couple uh, it's important to understand and also to be able to uh, face up personally on what those, some of those attitudes are. Now, um, the fact is that when we are, when you are interacting with someone else, with with uh, with your spouse, especially if if there are more negative attitudes or behaviors that are unhealthy or a temperament that can be. Um, that can be, uh, you know, something that that seeks for a personal gain. It can often, uh, uh, it can often cause uh, significant issues. So, ultimately, we need to look at these attitudes. Excuse me. Excuse me. So ultimately, we have to look at these attitudes from um, from what God's word says. Okay, uh, when we need to develop attitudes which are Christ-like and have a temperament that is controlled by the Holy Spirit and a behavior that is in alignment to the word. Okay. So when you looked at chapter two, uh, when when we were looking at chapter two for the preparing for marriage. There was one portion where we stressed on the need of being in good emotional health, and if you if you remember that, we listed many uh, mm, negative emotional uh, uh, responses that needs to be addressed addressed there. Okay, and uh, um, what we are going to look at here is going we're going to look at scripture and going to look at the antidote for those negative attitudes and behavior and see what how what what are some of the attitudes that christ displayed or had when he walked in this earth okay so as a believer we are all called to grow into the likeness of christ we are to come to the stature of the fullness of christ and that's what is that's what you see in ephesians 4:13 come to the stature of the fullness come to how christ is be christ like and also, we, uh, we, we, we read in scripture that when we abide in him, we walk as he walked. The more that we build our relationship in him, we get into the word, um, we come in close communion with Christ, we will walk as he walked. Now, this is something that applies to our marriage and how we work or how we respond to our spouse and our children so in every way that we respond we must be christ-like and we are called to have the same attitude as christ now if you look through um in digital digitally page uh, 53 uh yeah, digitally it's page 53. And uh, uh, on the soft copy, on the hard copy, you will see it as page 56. Now, there are many uh, scripture verses that show about what is the attitude we are to have, okay, in, in, in different um, walks and different things in life. And I, I may not read out the entire thing, but probably we'll pick up a few um 
from that entire uh, uh, entire chapter okay um so let's just look at a few let's look at the first one which is philippians 2 uh, 3 to 5 philippians 2 3 to 5 uh, would somebody uh, please read that out philippians chapter 2 verses 3 to 5 Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Let nothing be done. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is the New King James Version. Thank you, so, uh, Anthony. Thank you. Yeah. So if you look through uh, these verses, we'll just pick up, um, you know, a few of the um, uh, points that, that this brings about okay so it talks about let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit okay so there in itself uh, you know paul's bringing that out let nothing be done out of self selfishness um, uh, or or any kind of a conceit so in in other words he's saying what is it saying but it says in lowliness of mind let everyone esteem others better than himself and i think in the in the good news bible it talks about humility so so you come to be in a place of sacrifice where you're giving preference to one another okay in verse 4 it it also talks about how um uh, you do not look uh, selfishly at your own interests, but you look into the interests of others. Now, that's an attitude, right? Now, let's suppose there's something um, both the spouse, both the husband and the wife want to do something. One may want to go for football. The other may want to go for, a, for a, let's say, a musical. So it's saying, you know, each of you look into the interest of the other, okay, uh, rather than looking at your own interests. Uh, then again, if you look at verse seven, it, uh, it, it, it verse five says, "We should have the same mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." So that's what the Scripture implores us to have: the same attitude that Christ had is what we are called to have. And it goes on in verse seven. It says, um, "You know, He took the form of a." bond servant so he took the, he became he took the nature of a servant and bought a, came came into service so that's some of the aspects that we see of how christ like what is a christ like attitude and and some of these verses show that okay so you see selflessness you see humility you see uh, being uh, sa sacrificial uh, ensuring that you look into the interest of someone else uh, not being uh, not being selfish, but being more like a servant, not holding on to what you feel is right, but then giving into the other person. So that's what you see here. So uh, there are other scriptures. We'll just read probably uh, one or two more. Let's look at Philippians chapter four, verses four and eight. Philippians chapter four, verses four to eight. Can somebody read that out, please? Philippians chapter four, verses four to eight. Philippines uh, chapter 4, 4 to, 8, 4 to 8. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude towards everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my friends, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. 
Thank you, thank you, Nina. So again, when you look at these verses, there are there are very many attitudes that we are called to have. Okay, so verse beginning with verse four, we are called to rejoice. We are called to be joyful. We are called to rejoice. That means at every point of time, have joy, exuding joy. Okay, we are called to have gentleness as we. Uh, as we deal with men, it says, let your gentleness be known to others, be known to all men. Okay, then it talks about don't worry or don't be anxious about anything. So let's say when stress comes about, don't be anxious, but you know what to do, you know, pray and let your requests known before God. And what will happen when you are when you're not anxious, and when you put your trust in God, the peace of God will rest on you, you enjoy the peace of God that that keeps away uh, that uh, that that move that the peace of God that is beyond every understanding is what will keep your heart. Then verse eight is full of uh, um, good things that we are supposed to be filling our mind. It says, uh, uh, you know, whatever is is true, is noble, just, uh, uh, right, pure, lovely, honorable. If there are these, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on and on these things. So it says that's the kind of things we are to fill our minds with, looking for things that are noble, looking for things that are lovely, looking for things that are pure and honorable. So even maybe in the midst of things where everything seems uh, difficult, let's say in a relationship, things look difficult, looking for things that are that are that are praiseworthy okay so so similarly there are very many scriptures and if you look through that entire page on 56 uh, in, in your uh, soft copy uh, so in your hard copy you will see a lot more of attitudes that are there and uh, uh, if you look to the page next to it it will show you um, you know all of this is summarized there are they are summarized all the attitudes are summarized and i'll and i'll read that so that you know we have a, we have a fair account of whatever has been written okay so uh, i'm on page 57 in the book and um, in the uh, in the uh, so soft copy i'm on page 50, 54 okay and you i think it's in a tabular form over um, not 54, sorry. Yeah, 54, right? It's in a tabular form. And I, and I just want to read them out, okay? So the opposite of these positive Christ-like attitudes are what we call negative attitudes, and this is the list of those negative attitudes. Anger, arrogance, argumentative, blaming others, bitterness, controlling, condescending, cowardice, complaining, critical, cunning, cynical, demanding, depressive, dishonest, dissatisfaction, discontentment, deceptive, envy, greed, guarded, guilt, hatred, inadequacy, indifference, intolerance, insecurity, irresponsibility, jealousy, judgmental, low self-esteem, lust, manipulative, negativity, overly assertive, overly aggressive, pessimism, prejudice, pride, resentment, revengeful, rude sarcasm, secretive, self-centeredness, selfishness, shame, skeptical, stingy, suspicious, thoughtlessness, unforgiving, untrusting, unsympathetic, and victimized. So these are the list of attitudes, uh, uh, negative attitudes that you know we may find. But when you look at uh, scripture, uh, and and all of this that we we looked at that there is an entire list of what we sh how we should be living okay and again that's that's also there in the uh, as a tabular form um, in the uh, 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 in your book but again I'm just going to read out some of this okay so selflessness humility sacrifice giving preference to others looking out for the interest of others not being self centered being serve, having servanthood, not insisting on your rights, being joyful, thankful, prayerful, not complaining, not arguing, uh, being innocent, rejoicing, being gentle, uh, yeah, I, I, I do that, yeah, 
um, being gentle, um, not worrying, enjoying God's peace, thinking on things that are good, that deserve praise, that are true, being joyful in trials, being full of faith, being patient, not complaining about others, praying, singing, not lying, not insulting back, not threatening, not re retaliating. Now, all of that has come from the verses that, that's, that's written there. So this is what we are called to have. These attitudes are what we call called to have. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to answer Jacqueline's question. She said, can you please clarify on what it means to be guarded? Okay. So guarded is when you're not being when you withhold certain information or certain uh, certain feelings, certain certain thoughts about something, you you withhold that from the other person, and and sometimes, for example, um, uh, maybe maybe you you're holding a certain um, hurt against somebody and what someone's someone's done to you. And even when they have asked you a couple of times what's wrong, you're very guarded. You do not, you you kind of place a, a guard around not allowing the person to see what's happening with them. So being guarded is refusing to share when when you're going through something or when you're going through something that's difficult or when you have something against. That's what guarded means, not, not being open and not being... Uh, willing to engage in in a clarification or a conversation because either of the fear of what it will bring up or the fear of uh, 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 you know not wanting to uh, rock the boat. So guarded is that just just ensuring that you keep away from discussing something. All right, Jack and I hope that helped. I hope that was was more clear. Right now when well, what happens when um, when there is a negative attitude remember when when we have a negative attitude it can affect everything that that we say everything that we do and everything that we see okay so it can uh, be, having a negative attitude can affect or impact the way we respond or we do things all right uh, now, what happens is that our attitude, uh, sorry, our, yeah, our, the negative attitude, it just doesn't have a bearing on yourself, but it definitely has a bearing on on other people, on the person that you may be you may be um, uh, interacting with. Okay, and so much so um, in marriage, and and often this will affect uh, affect the way that you you respond to to the other person especially let's say you have a negative attitude towards the person okay that you that you're talking to you may exhibit some negative behaviors you may complain or you may find fault you may always be in a place of criticizing okay and it often results to a lot of um, a lack of peace within the relationship um, attitudes also can uh, impact your expectation it, it can impact your experience and it can also impact what we call like like an exit like so for example let's say you're going to do something right maybe you're starting a, you're going to start a new course okay you want to go study and you want to start a new course and your attitude will set your expectation you may look at the course and say, okay, nothing good comes from it. Or, you know, even before you get into the course, you're saying, okay, whatever I have joined has never worked out well. Or I have, uh, you know, someone has told me that these teachers are not good. So you're either ex expecting something that is uh, that, that will help you or you're expecting something that's going to go against you. Okay. So what happens is it affects, if it affects the way that you enter into a certain situation or a certain uh, concern or for example let's say even even marriage right when what your attitude towards marriage suppose you have a very negative attitude towards marriage you're going into it expecting that there is something wrong that something will go wrong or the person is not going to do this for you so uh, that in itself will affect your expectation of how this happens will also expect uh, affect your experience whether you're going to enjoy it or whether you're going to uh, going to have trouble in it whether you're going to 
uh, do the best to stand up uh, or overcome every challenge or uh, situa situational issues that come about, or whether you're going to, um, you know, succumb and and uh, and experience something that's that's negative. So it it really determines whether you're going to be able to pull yourself out through that entire situation, or you know, sit back and just wait for the wave to come over and and uh, you know damage you and so it it affects your uh, uh, the expectation you have something it affects your experience and it also affects how you exit that is the way that you leave uh, the entire journey either you take the best out of it you take the most out of it or you go on go back holding the grudges against it, right? Maybe this course, like for example, I was saying, you're, you're in a course. B because you've expected that you're not going to learn anything or that the, the class is going to be boring, it's going to affect your, your experience, your journey through it. And when you go out of it, you're, you've actually come out of it really just complaining and saying, oh, that was a waste of time. There wasn't anything uh, uh, about it. So it affects it affects this the, these three things. You're, your um, uh, it affects how you get in it affects your journey and it affects how you leave leave it as well okay now uh, it, it's important to understand that uh, our attitudes usually our negative attitudes um, can be learned okay it, it can be learned uh, through maybe uh, wrong models that we have okay or because we have gone through certain life with some negative emotions at its root like uh, when, especially when when we uh, um, when we hold back our emotions especially the 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 signal emotions of maybe anger or of jealousy or of sadness when you hold back those uh, uh, emotions it tends to come forth in a negative attitude and behavior like when you're when you hold uh, a negative attitude towards someone maybe it's anger um, you're always looking at mistrust at people okay so and and this comes in the form of words maybe sarcastic uh, sarcastic words it can come come in the uh, in the words of critical uh, remarks or um, it can come in the form of maybe abusive language or abusive behavior so our attitudes often uh, uh, come because it's a learned one not just from others but something that we have used as a pattern of coping so now when you're able to realize this uh, it's not something that we need to live with you can it is a choice that you have to change that attitude towards something or towards um, uh, towards others right it's something that that you can you can you make the choice and you have uh the lord to help you and that's what we're going to be looking at at the end of this chapter okay so uh it, that can, whatever attitude we hold on to is definitely going to make a difference in the way that we think and the way that we uh respond uh to, to different things okay so what is it that we need to do the uh when we do, when we have an insight about what um, uh, what attitudes we 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 are holding, rem remember that for those of, for those when we believe in the Lord, when we are open to the Lord, He is the one who will transform us into the image uh, of Christ um, by the Holy Spirit, and that's what we see in in two Corinthians uh, three eighteen that He will transform us into His likeness in an ever increasing measure. So he's the one who transforms us into the image of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? So he will do his work in us to change all of those negative attitudes and behavior where he will help us to deal with the core of it, with the root of it, so that there is a change that comes which is lasting, a change that makes us uh, open to his healing. Okay, so uh, so Philippians two thirteen says he works in us and makes us willing and able to do according to his will or according to uh, uh, to what he what is right. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit works works within us, it transforms. So we we come to a place to pray, ask him to help to work. 
through these negative attitudes and behaviors so it can be changed and we become more Christ-like. So the more that we abide and the more that we depend on him, the more that we see that that change happens, okay? The next thing we're going to be looking at is spirit-controlled temperament. Now, um, uh, the temperament or a personality often is expressed through, like I said, through the way that we, our, our behavior or the way that we um, uh, we respond, okay? So there are, uh, when you look at it, there are different kinds of personality types um, and uh, you know there are there are very many um, theories that it, it that comes about about the different personality types. But the book has brought about a a, a very uh, simple form of different kinds of personality types. Now, even though it may look as if you know these are etched in stone, uh, right? And um, uh, that that you know once a personality, you you can never change it. Um, yeah. it it, it, we need to understand that these things only help us to develop a good understanding or a good framework on how to understand our personalities with its strengths and with its weakness. But um, regardless of what our personality type we may have, whatever we recognize, we need to understand that it is a choice and it is something that we can develop and, and bring about a change. So we are not held on or we, we are not trapped in what we have or the kind of uh, situation we grew up in or what we learned as a behavior. But if we choose to unlearn what is wrong and develop what is good, that, that can happen. And as believers, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We are influenced by the Holy Spirit. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, um, you will only bring out what is inside of you. Like when you shake a coffee mug, only coffee will come out, you know, tea or juice or water doesn't come out. It's coffee that comes out. So similarly, when we are filled with the Spirit, when we are influenced by the Holy Spirit, whatever shakes us, only the 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 attitude and and what the Holy Spirit has put in it, in us will come out. Okay, we will express His character when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So even though we we as individuals may have our own personalities and temperaments, but when we are influenced or filled by the Holy Spirit, then we begin to express the nature and the character of God. Okay, we are still our own people, but we are submitting to the Spirit of God, and that's why we call ourselves the uh, call ourselves being spirit control or call ourselves being filled with the Spirit. So. It's his nature, it's his power, it's his strength that helps us to um, uh, express that and, and glorify God through that. Okay, so when we continuously do this, when we um, consistently have this way of life, when we continuously walk in the spirit, then we then we are characterized by what scripture tells us is we we uh, have the fruit of the of the spirit so that's what you read in galatians 5 22 to 23 it says there are nine fruit of the spirit it's love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control so when we are spirit filled when we are spirit controlled what happens these traits or these qualities in our life become you know, it, it, it comes out in a certain way when we show affection to other people. We rejoice uh, uh, in things with life. We have a sense of peace and calmness uh, despite the kind of tribulations that may go by. We have that endurance, the, the ability to stick on with things that may be difficult. We show compassion and love, uh, a sense of gentleness and kindness to others. We want to bless others. You know, this this all happens only with the work of the of the spirit. Um, we continue to be loyal to whatever God has called us to do. We uh, we we stay humble, and we always uh, we ensure that uh, what, uh, that that we are controlled in our desires and in our wants. So when you 
when this, uh, as you, as we read in 2 Corinthians 3, 3.17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there there is freedom. So the Holy Spirit is the one who brings about uh, the ability for us to to live a life that is controlled by the by the power of his spirit and we live in that place of righteousness peace and joy the holy spirit is the one who brings that as we see, read in romans of 14:17 okay so that's what we see when we live uh, in accordance to the holy spirit okay the the next part is the behavior our behavior now um, the whole of scripture talks about um, you know, we, we see that the word of God is true. The word of God um, is faithful and it, it is true, right? And so the, the truth of God's word is that that's, that's what gives us, corrects us. It gives us instructions. It brings us to a place of rebuking. It equips us, as we read in 2 Corinthians, uh, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy, uh, um, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, okay? I'm just going to read that from uh, from uh, from another version, apart from uh, that which is here. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. It says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And what does it profit you? It profits you for doctrine. It profits you for uh, reproof. So so what does it say? It, it uh, profits you for instruction. It profits you to for conviction of sin. It profits you for discipline, for correction. It's, it, it, uh, it, it trains you. It trains you in, in obedience. It, it instructs you in righteousness. And um, uh, I think that is, oh, there is one more. Sorry, I just lost it. Yeah, and for, for correction. So it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness. So this is what God's uh, God's word does so that we are qualified and we are equipped so that we are qualified and equipped for what? For every good work, all right? So when we look into scripture, we the, the, um, uh, uh, when, when we are able to see how we are misaligned by what God would like us to be or how we, we should be responding or how we should be behaving. So uh, when, when we focus on God, when we focus on our love for God to please him, it helps us to align ourselves in obedience to what God, God's word wants us to do. So what we do, what we say, when if we are uh, aligning ourselves with God's word, which is truth, which corrects us, then we find that our relationships also uh, work well. It applies to anything that we do, right? Our, our relationships work well. So there are a lot of scripture that that you will see again to show us, um, you know, make, uh, and throughout scripture, uh, that there are nuggets of it. But nevertheless, we've taken two scriptures and maybe we'll just read that so that we know and understand what as God's people, as the people of God, what kind of behavior should we be aligned to? So could someone read Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15? Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 12 to 15. Can someone read that, please? Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Mm, verse 15 to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful 
Thank you, Jacqueline. So you will see that some uh, how script how how the word instructs us on how we conduct ourselves, how we need to behave. So you know it's it's beautiful. It says in Colossians three twelve to fifteen, it says you must clothe yourself with what with compassion, with kindness, with humility, gentleness, patience, being tolerant, being forgiving. Uh, verse fourteen, it says add love. Okay, be in perfect unity. Um, uh, verse 15, it says, let the peace that God's given you help you or guide you in the decisions that you need to make. Be thankful, right? So, uh, and there is 1 Peter 3, 7 to 11 also talks about that. So looking at the word, it shows us what we need to align our behaviors with, okay? So the first part, we just looked at attitudes, uh, uh, temperament as well as behavior. We looked into scripture to see what are the Christ-like attitudes that we have a choice to move into, uh, how we can, uh, our entire temperament or our personality uh, needs to be controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we manifest and we exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. And lastly, the behavior, how we can change and conduct ourselves diff uh, differently by doing what the word says. Okay. Now, in our next um, uh, uh, next hour, we will look at how um, we can align ourselves into into moving from our current attitudes, our temperament, behavior to what God really desires of us. Okay. We will take a break for ten minutes. It's ten fifty-one on my clock, we will resume back at 11.01. 1. 